We're looking at the little pistol they could in this episode of the Gear Guide. So when it comes to airsoft pistols, most of the people are grabbing for the big guns, the big monster hand cannons, and sometimes when you just need a backup, the little guys are the ones that are often overlooked. And we're taking a look at the Walther PPS by Elite Force. And if you guys didn't know this, Elite Force and Walther are all part of the same firearms company or airsoft company. So when you know when Elite Force is gonna bring a Walther product to the market, it's going to be something interesting. So the PPS is a one-to-one -one replica of the extended version of the Real Steel PPS, and this is a CO2 partial blowback. And I'll get to what partial blowback is here in a second. And again, this is a really affordable gun. This thing clocks in at $69 retail. So this is something well within the price point of just about every single player looking to have a great little pistol as a sidearm. What you get on the PPS is a polymer lower and a metal upper. And the slide does lock back, although just a little bit. It doesn't expose any rounds. It doesn't expose the mag because the magazine is this small stick type. It holds 14 rounds and goes right up into the grip. And by doing that, it keeps the price of those magazines really low. I think they're about $15 US. So overall, the cost of ownership of this pistol and operation is really on the low end. So instead of being powered by green gas, this little guy is powered by CO2. And you take out the mag, you pop this back grip off, and then that's where the cartridge goes. What's also really neat, I thought this was a fantastic touch, is instead of needing an Allen key, which is really easy to lose to tighten that CO2 cartridge in when you go to change it, the actual piece I took off the grip to access the compartment has it built in right here on the top. So you can tighten it down and loosen it, and you're never gonna lose this piece because it goes right back in. Once you've got it back together and the mag's in, a simple chambering of the first round just to kind of get the gun charged up and you are good to go. The lower frame has stippling here on the grip, so it's really nice, good finger hold, and even for a decent size hand, it actually feels right. So for smaller or larger hands, this thing's gonna work well. You won't have a pinky hanging off the end, or you won't feel like you're holding something massive. Even though the grip looks really big this way, at profile, it's a very thin pistol. So that's what sets this thing apart. It's designed in the real world for concealed carry to keep it a nice low profile against your body, but for airsoft, this thing makes it easy to tuck into your pocket or a pouch or something, or even into your belt to have as a backup. Operation is really easy too. Like I said, you chamber the round. The safety itself, if you want to turn it off or on, is actually a little button that pushes through on the trigger itself. It blocks the trigger from moving. And once you've got that round chambered, you're good to go. You get 14 shots. And when it's empty, it's just a simple quick change of this with the press of the button that's on the trigger guard for the mag release. And you can change and swap in your next mag. Also, if you do want to run accessories like some little low profile lasers, they actually give you a tiny little rail on the front to make that happen, which is also pretty cool. Sights on the top are white dots. There's two white dots in the back, one in the front, so it's real easy to get down and get on your target. Now, the only thing you're not going to get at $69 price point on this little guy is an adjustable hop-up. It is fixed, so I'd recommend probably running 0.2 gram BBs to make sure you're getting that right trajectory and right accuracy since you can't make those adjustments. Moving to the Chrono, actually it was pretty surprising. I saw most of our shots in the low 300s, around 310. A few of the first ones coming out of the 12 gram cartridge of CO2 were in that 330 mark, but they settled back down. What was incredibly impressive and something I can't show you here on video is how many shots I got out of this pistol before I had to change the cartridge. I am not exaggerating here. I got over 200 shots and I kept going. I thought it was a joke. I thought this was like something was wrong. I actually got a second one of these to test and I was getting over 200 shots out of a single CO2 cartridge because with each shot it's just a little bit of energy moving this thing back there's not much to it you're not dealing with all that blowback and all that mess so most of the gas is going out of that barrel to shoot the BB and that's really great because the FPS is so low there's not a lot of moving parts it makes this thing incredibly efficient and at that FPS it's great for just about any field you can imagine whether it be CQB or even outdoor play I think the only place it kind of falls off like I said with no adjustable hop up you're going to be really make those super long shots but again this is just that backup pistol that's perfect to have in case your primary goes down or you want to get one of those quick up close kills. So guys, if you're looking for a pistol that's incredibly affordable, extremely efficient, and very, very cheap to operate, considering the mags are affordable, the number of shots you get out of CO2 cartridge before you have to change those, take a look at the Walther PPS pistol from Elite Force. Like I said, you can pick it up for around $69 US anywhere Elite Force products are sold. 
Well guys, I honestly was really surprised at the efficiency. I was kind of ready for a mm, review on this guy and it kind of blew me away. I mean, obviously the hop up is a kind of a big thing if you're gonna be making those long shots. So if you guys are a big Milsim fanatic, this may or may not be the right pistol for you. For me, this might be a third pistol in case you wanna do one of those New York reloads. Instead of having to reload the mag, you're in a tight spot, have a second pistol out and indoors or to toss over to a teammate if their primary goes down and they weren't prepared to bring a sidearm. But I wanna ask you guys this what are your thoughts on carrying multiple pistols in airsoft you guys dual wield you guys want to do those new york reloads where you don't actually change the mag you just grab the next loaded pistol and keep going let me know in the comment section below well guys i'll be back in the next episode of the gear guide where i review a pistol that's exactly opposite of this it's three times the size of a desert eagle 50 caliber and takes three 12 gram cartridges to shoot one round